Town, thank you very much for the very detailed presentation. <laughs> but my, my worry with birds is how do you deal when you get specimen of birds like that? How do you deal with the entries so that uh, they don't get smell? Okay, I didn't, I didn't give you all the, the details of how we prepare specimens. No. Um, to prepare a skin, imagine that you need to get me out of my clothes with just one cut. So there are three strategies. Well, there are two strategies. The old time bird skinners start right here at the sternum and open down to the cloaca. And then they'll cut legs, tail, and they'll bring the body out like this. Cut the wings, cut the neck, done. Okay? A newer school, but not necessarily better, it just depends on what you're comfortable with, is cutting the length of the sternum. The hardest part of that one is working over here, cutting the first wing, neck, wing, and then the body comes out backwards. About 25 years ago, I was preparing my 400th, 500th specimen, and it just wasn't working for me. And I heard about a collector in East Africa who had a different approach. And he opened here under the wing, cut this wing, pull the body out the side. And so I took 20 birds and figured out how to skin by that system. And that's my system. And to my knowledge, nobody else skins that way at present. But I like it, works better for me. And so essentially what you're doing is you're removing all the muscle and entrails from the main part of the body. You skin out the wings out to about here. And on a bird, think about a chicken wing. There's not a lot of meat out in the hand. For really big birds, we'll cut the hand and pull out the bits of meat that are there. In the skull, what we do is we cut like this and pull out the brains, pull out the eyes, and replace everything with cotton. And then with the legs, essentially birds have meat only in the upper part of their legs. So we'll skin down to the end of the meat. And where it becomes just you know scales and skin and bone, we just cut. And so that leg remains with the skin. Another way we mess up the skeleton by preserving a skin. So essentially, by the end of it, a well-preserved bird is just bone, skin, and feathers. And if that dries well, it becomes like parchment. And bird specimens will last hundreds of years. Um, if it's prepared poorly, you can get mold, you can get insects, all sorts of problems. So a good skinner, especially as you get to big birds, a good skinner is going to take a lot of time to clean out all the tendons from the legs and things like that. And then a big problem in the field is how to get things dried. Here it would be easy. Three or four hours here in the sun, done. But you get into rainforest, you get regular rains, and you're fighting the whole time with mold, with insects. In the old days, we used to and still do occasionally, we'll take a burner out, just like with plant, plant presses. And now twice in my career, I've been in situations where the burner's gotten out of hand and some bird specimens have gotten burned. And you know, that's, that's life in the tropics. So at the end of the day, bird specimens are a lot like plant specimens. It's no, nothing wet, it's all dried, and the only question is, are you breaking it? Is it getting humid, or are there insects? Okay? So, so at the end of it, you have to stitch it carefully. It's, it's, not, it's not stitching like, you know, on your yeah, shirt. Yeah, I understand. Um, Just tucking it. Yeah, what we'll do, you know, if there's an opening like this, I'll put a knot at the top, okay. and I'll put, I'll bring this thread down here, straight across, straight back, and then at the bottom. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pull like this, and never, you know, if I do this, it'll end up pulling like that. 
And so the breast of the bird looks very ugly, which is another reason why I went under the wing, because sometimes I don't even, even have to stitch up my birds. <laughs>